Hey guys, Assalamualaikum. Welcome back to another virtual lecture. In this video, we will continue our study on testing proportions. But this time, we will see how to conduct a hypothesis testing on two population proportions. Now, just like before, when we want to conduct a hypothesis testing on two population proportions, the same assumption is made. But this time, we need to make sure that both samples are large enough that the normal distribution will serve as a good approximation of the binomial distribution. Now, let's take a look at all of the six steps in conducting our hypothesis testing for two population proportions. As I mentioned to you before, all the six steps apply. However, there are differences in writing the hypothesis in step 1 as well as to calculate the test statistic in step 3. So how do we write our hypothesis for a two population proportions test? Here is how we wrote the hypothesis for a one population proportion. As you can see, there's only one population proportion and we test it against a hypothetical value. But this time, since we are testing two population proportions, the way we write the hypothesis is like this. We are comparing that two population proportions are equal to each other or not. So if the null hypothesis was we assume that they're equals to each other, the alternate is they are not equals to each other. And just like before, the sign of the alternate hypothesis can be either greater than or lesser than depending on the context of the question. Now, for a one population proportion test, this is how we calculate the test statistic. The formula is slightly different for a two population proportions test. Let me show you. Okay, so for a one population proportion test, this is how we calculate the test statistic, right? Sample proportion minus the population proportion over pi times 1 minus pi over n and square root it all, right? So for a two population proportions test, it will be slightly different because since we have two populations and from each population, we took two samples, right? So here we have n1 and n2. And from each sample, we managed to get two sample proportions, p1 and p2. Now what we need to do is very similar to the concept of the pooled t-test. In the pooled t-test, we needed to calculate the pooled variance first. So this time around, we need to calculate something called the pooled proportion, okay? So let's call it as PC to denote it as a combined proportion. What it means is we need to combine the elements of these two um, sample proportions, okay? So the way to get the pooled proportion is very simple, okay? Uh, what we need to do is, okay, if you remember, how can we get P? P is X over N, right? So how can we get P1? P1 is simply X1 over N1, and P2 is simply X2 over N2. So how can we get PC or the pooled proportion? It's very simple. It's simply X1 plus X2 over N1 plus N2. Once we've calculated our pooled proportion, what we need to do is find the test statistic. So the formula is still Z, but up here, instead of P minus pi, it is P1 minus P2 because we've got two samples now, right? Okay, and down here, as for the standard error, instead of using pi, we will use PC or the pooled proportion that we've calculated just now. So it becomes PC times 1 minus PC over the first sample size plus PC times 1 minus PC over the second sample size. And we square root them all. Okay, can you see the difference? Okay, let me repeat again. This is the test statistic for a one population proportion test. And this is the test statistic for a two population proportions test. In order to get this test statistic, we need to calculate the pooled proportion first. Okay, let's try and do this example. The research department at the Home Office of New Hampshire Insurance conducts ongoing research on the causes of automobile accidents, the characteristics of the drivers, etc. 
a random sample of 400 policies written on single persons revealed that 120 of them had at least one accident in the previous three-year period. Similarly, a sample of 600 policies written on married persons revealed that 150 of them had been in at least one accident. At the 5% significance level, is there a significant difference in the proportions of single and married persons having an accident during a three-year period? Determine the p-value. Since we are dealing with two samples now, it is best to define the randoms variable first. So here I've decided to define them as S and M. So I'm letting S to denote all of the information on single persons, whereas M is for married persons. And besides that, try to extract all of the information given from this question. So we've seen that there are altogether 400 single people being surveyed and 600 married people being surveyed. And since it was mentioned that for the single people, 120 of them had at least one accident, okay, so what we do is we take 120, which is X in this case, and divide it over the total number of sample size for single people. So 120 over 400, we get the PS, or the sample proportion of uh, single people who are involved in an accident, okay? So it's 0 0.3 or 30%. Whereas, it was mentioned that uh, for the sample of married people, 150 of them were involved in an accident. So that is what we did here, X over N. Okay, so 150 over 600, we get 25%. So now let's take a look at how to write the hypothesis. Now, as you know, the null hypothesis always assumes there's no difference between the two population proportions. So here what we write is, the proportion of single people who are involved in accident is exactly the same as the proportion of married people who are involved in accident. Okay, but from the question it asks us, is there a significant difference? So the key word is difference, which means not equals to. That would be our alternate hypothesis. And then we proceed with step two, which is to write the level of significance. Okay, so the level of significance, or alpha, is given as 5%. And from our alternate hypothesis, we can identify that our test is a two-tailed test. Next is calculating the test statistic. Now remember, before we can find the Z, or the test statistic for this test, we need to calculate the pooled proportion first. How do we do that? This is basically the formula, okay? So remember, it's PC equals to X1, um, or actually in this case, it's XS plus XM. Okay, try to be consistent, better than me. Okay, so what we do is we add the number of single and married people who are involved in accidents over the total number of sample sizes that belong to the two groups. And we can get the PC, or the pooled proportion, as 27%. Okay, now we take this pooled proportion and put it in the calculation for test statistic here. All right, so remember up here is P1 minus P2, or in our case, PS minus PM, over the PC or pooled proportion times 1 minus PC over the sample size for the first sample, which in my case is the uh, single people, plus PC times 1 minus PC over the sample size for the second sample or the married people. Okay, why don't you take the calculator and figure this out? So the answer would be 1.74. Now step four involves writing down the rejection rule. And before that, we need to sketch the rejection area, right? So here is our assumed uh, Z distribution. So we know that the center will always be zero because this is where we standardize our proportions or averages. And in this case, it's proportion because it's a proportions test. So we know that it is a two-tailed test and alpha is 5%. Okay, so from previous videos, we know that if our test is two-tailed test and alpha is 5%, we know that we have these two points here, plus minus 1.96. Okay, so here we have two rejection areas. So our alpha is divided to 2, so alpha becomes 2.5% or 0 0.025, and here's where we reject our null hypothesis. Likewise, alpha is 0 0.025 here, and here's where we reject the null hypothesis. And in the middle here is our acceptance area, 
where we do not reject the null hypothesis. So let's write our rejection or decision rule from our sketching here. We will reject the null hypothesis if our test statistic is 1 greater than 1.96 or if it's smaller than minus 1.96. Remember, since there are two rejection areas, we will have two decision rules. Moving on to step number five. Now, we know that our test statistic was 1.74. So where's 1.74, guys? Here, 1.74 is somewhere here, which means it lies in the acceptance area. So what is our decision? Do not reject the null. So what is our conclusion? We need to go back to the first step. So we decided just now to not reject the null. So that means we are taking the null hypothesis, not reject, which means we're saying that there is no significant difference in the proportions of single and married people having an accident during a three-year period. Here I'm showing you um, the step five and six, yeah? Five and six. Do not reject the null, and we can conclude that there is no difference in the proportion of single and married people who have accidents in the past three years. Okay, to find the p-value. Okay, remember guys, now our distribution is a z distribution. So how do we find the p-value if it's a set distribution? Okay, it's 0 0.5 minus the probability of our test statistic. Now remember just now, our test statistic was 1.74. So what we need to do now is to take the z table. Okay, here's our z table. And let's take a look at what is the probability for 1.74. 1.7 is here, and 1.74 is basically here. Yeah, it's 0 0.4591. So half minus 0 0.4591. So we will get 0 0.0409. So now we need to compare the p-value with our alpha. We have two choices. Okay, so we can either um, compare this with half of alpha, or if you want to compare this with the entire alpha, we need to times two. Okay, so let's say for the purpose of simplicity, um, because this is already half, right? Half of the table. So we just compare this with half of alpha. So as we can see here, since 4% is more than 2.5%, okay, right? So our p-value is bigger than our alpha. We can say that we do not have evidence to suggest that the null is um, false. Therefore, we do not reject the null. Okay, which is exactly the same as our uh, decision before. Okay. Alternatively, if you want to use the second method, we take 0 0.0409 and times 2, and we compare that against 5%. We will get the same result. Okay.